Hey, my name is Gabriella Gentry, and this is my review on can dragonfly and damselfly communities be used as bioindicators of land use intensification. The authors were Maya Rocha Ortega and Alex Cordoba Aguilar from the Department of Evolutionary Ecology at the National Autonomous University of Mexico. They wrote alongside Pilar Rodriguez from the National Commission for the Knowledge and Use of Biodiversity. They received two grants, one from the university and the other from the National Council for Science and Technology. It's well known that as urbanization increases, the general diversity of species decreases. Invertebrates were often overlooked in other studies, and when they did look at them, the population was the main focus rather than the overall response. For this study, they wanted to look more into that, but also look at how the traits of their dispersal help diminish the effects from habitat changes. So their overall mobility, their body size, and how and what resources they used. Their main expectation was that increased land use would have a stronger effect on diversity than body size could compensate for. Their hypothesis was that dragonflies would be more sensitive directly after land use, while damselflies would display the more delayed effects. They looked at over 5,000 records for each time period, and the two time periods ranged from 1980 to 1993 and 1994 to 2010. They had predetermined hydrologic regions and they sorted the land within based on the land use and the land cover. The four categories were original vegetation, repaired vegetation such as regrown areas, transformed areas like farmland, and urbanized areas. The Odonata were, taxa, were identified at the species level and categorized by size. They measured a thorax length as a proxy for their size. They wanted to compare a few things in between the two time periods as the time changed, um, the body size, and their diversity based on the location, um, specifically as what, what category these um, characteristics were in. But they also wanted to look at um, how often members of the same species would kind of um, maintain in one specific region. And all of this really had to do with um, their dispersal ability. The overall effects for, um, for both species, both dragonflies and damselflies, were that areas of original vegetation, um, those that haven't really been affected or changed that much, um, maintain the most diversity out of all of the four categories. Um, <clears throat> and areas that managed to be repaired within the first time period had an increase of diversity by time period too. So they managed to have um, some influx of these taxa. Um, and they split the size into two categories, large and small. And while damselflies and dragonflies weren't necessarily the large and small Dragonflies were mostly the larger, and damselflies were mostly smaller. Dragonflies were also more affected by land cover, um, which is just the type of land space. Um, they preferred really just more of the grassy area, and they mostly just disliked the urban areas, while damselflies were more affected by what the land was used for. Um, so the farmland or the urbanized land was not um, where they preferred. They mostly stayed in the original or repaired or attempted to move there. Um, dragonflies were, and the larger species were much better dispersers. They were able to move as changes occurred um, within the two periods rather than from one time period to the next. And as um, land cover changed, they would note drops in certain areas and rises, especially in the repaired or the original as compared to the urban. Um, when it comes to the smaller taxa, they were much poorer dispersers and um, they didn't manage to have much movement into the original and repaired and out of the newly urbanized areas until the second period. And their overall diversity diminished for the farmland areas and the urbanized areas. They also maintained a slow and steady fall in overall population because um, they, 
they it took them so much longer to be able to move to more sustainable areas. Their conclusions of this analysis were that dragonflies were a good indication of how recent land cover and um, the changes of the use of the land directly affect um, species at that time, while damsel flies were a better indicator of the long-term effect of these changes, but also of the benefits of repairing areas. Um, repaired vegetation definitely showed a great improvement um, that they provided shelter for sensitive and more tolerant species and had a great rise in diversity and population size <clears throat> in the second period compared to the first, especially after um, the increase of the urban and the farmland. Um, and they also noted that combining the Combi combining the look at the species was better than just looking at any one individual because it gave a much more well-rounded view of the ecological health of those regions. And they also noted that the overall size was better than just looking at each um, taxa because the larger damselflies were able to move as well as the dragonflies and the smaller dragonflies had the same issues as the regular sized damselflies. I found this article to be very credible. It was published in 2019, so it's fairly recent, and it was in the journal Ecological Indicators. This journal had a site score of 7.6 and an impact factor of 4.2. It also had open access, which meant that anyone that wanted to could go in and access this information rather than have to pay for it. They also noted that they had rigorous peer reviews by their editorial board, which was full of PhD holders that were from many countries all over the world. Um, they also used a huge amount of data, and the data was older, but it gave a more, um, a really nice long-term view about how that works, and I feel like that could be re-implemented and would be a really good theory to test in other biomonitoring. Um, also, the authors were university professors, so it could be said that they were well known in the subject already. And they attempted to eliminate any temporal bias, and they used only data with thorough um, timestamps to eliminate any problems with um, the data not being in chronological order. The only problem that I really had with it was that they tried to compare um, way too many variables, and that seemed like it might be kind of hard to repeat. Um, it wouldn't have a good um, null wouldn't have a good hypothesis set up because of the multitude of variables that they looked at. Thank you.